vote on Super Tuesday. Good evening, I'm Laurie Johnson. Welcome to Red, White and Blue. Super Tuesday is considered by many the second most important Tuesday in our nation's political process. But what makes this Tuesday in March so super? Well, it's the day within a presidential election year that a majority of the states hold primary elections to select delegates to national conventions at which each party's presidential candidate will be nominated. This year will have a stronger Southern feel as a group of Southern states, including Texas, have moved their primaries to Super Tuesday, creating what is being called the Southeastern Conference or the SEC primary. So tonight we take a look at this upcoming primary and ask how will the SEC primary impact each state's race? And what are the local races to keep an eye on? Tonight, we're pleased to welcome Senator Sylvia Garcia, representing Texas District 6, and Senator Paul Betancourt, representing Texas District 7. And leading our discussion are hosts David Jones and Gary Polland. Thank you, Lori. And you know, David, I call this the... The, the dream team? Absolutely. Yeah. Garcia and Betancourt, <laughs> I mean, we've had them on a lot. Yeah. They're like, it's like... It's, and uh, nobody, it's nobody leads the discussion, is what I recall. Uh, well, no, well, well, you got to show. We're still waiting for the show where we turn the tables as oh, we offer right. to do. And we interview at least, you too. At least two times we've, we've offered, right, right. Senator? So make well, it maybe we could do like an April Fool's show and you two could be the host and we'll be well, the Because this is the like greatest it. political year since 1968. That's why, that's why we should do that show. Let's I go like back to it. 1912 because that was the year when <laughs> Roosevelt bolted the Republican convention. <laughs> he bolted the Republican convention, as you know, and, and left it to Taft, ran as a third party, and delivered the White House to Woodrow Wilson. Uh, how likely is it that we will end up with a brokered convention, Mr. Betancourt? Very low probability at this point. It looks like right now the question is, will anybody be able to stop Donald Trump on his march to the Republican nomination. Obviously, if Donald gets the nomination, he's not gonna bolt and have a bull moose party uh, like 1912. And, and really, that's why the Super Tuesday is so critical. Uh, Senator Cruz will win Texas. I think he'll win Arkansas, but it would be good to pick up either uh, Oklahoma or Colorado or some other Western state. Then we have to look to see whether Senator Rubio can win one in the Southeast. Uh, it's very difficult to be involved without winning for very much longer because the majority of the delegates will be picked by March the 15th. The question though becomes, Bloomberg has said, Mayor Bloomberg of New York, that if it's Trump, he's going to jump in. Will it be too late or will he get in? Well, uh, the answer I think is if it, by mid-March, if he gets in, he could be a major factor in this race. As an independent. Why would, he get, why would he get in and knock out Hillary Clinton, who's obviously going to wipe up uh, the floor with Bernie Sanders? Yeah, we will not have a broker convention. I, I predict that Hillary will win probably 10 of the 12 Super Tuesday states, including Texas. And she'll be well on her way with uh, with delegates to, uh, to 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 reach her goal. That I think that she'll just see Bernie in the rearview mirror after. Super well, Tuesday. but Bernie has burned a lot of political capital from the Clintons this time. He's been much more widely popular than people would imagine. And also, too, it's part of the general dissatisfaction with both political parties. You've got. Uh, Bernie Sanders, who's saying that we haven't been progressive, i.e. we need to be socialist on the Democratic side. And you got Donald Trump basically saying that we need to effectively, you know, change the entire establishment out, no matter People who do, it is. People do seem to be a little frustrated with government. And any, anybody <laughs> that's considered an insider or inside government, they don't like us, Paul. Well, they're actually right now <laughs> they, mad know, as H-E double remember, hockey sticks, and that's for sure. Maybe, uh, maybe, yeah, this, yeah, maybe this explains it. I used this uh, earlier in a presentation that Gary and I were together on. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the Economic Innovation Group's report out today that shows that the highest level wealth zip codes in the United States have shown huge gains in not only wealth but jobs. The lowest zi uh, wealth zip codes, which are mostly in the South, Upper South, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, have seen job losses where uh, it's 50% unemployment for adults and 25% uh, uh, of the people are in high school education. These, this inequality of income business is real and both Trump and uh, Bernie seem well, to be moving on it. No, it's uh, this it, is, goes back to Obama's public policy. Stagnant economy. Stagnant economy, zero interest rate economy from 2009. And, and there's been seven years of this now going on eight years. And of course, people are really wondering what is ha wrong with the system. 
Now, at this point in time, they're basically saying they want to change in the system. That's loud and clear in both political parties. But I will tell you that the anger in the Republican Party is equally divided between their anger, they are angry at leadership, but they're also extremely frustrated and mad at President Obama because they consider him really the source of the problem. The Republicans haven't done enough to fight him and fix it. That's in their mind. But the Obama is still uh, someone that they, this has been a terrible time well, for them. I think there's a lot of people who really don't feel that way about the president and do feel that he's made a lot of progress, particularly in, in, in decreasing the unemployment rate and making sure that we work toward equal pay for equal work and providing insurance for millions of Americans across the country who could not do that before the yeah, Affordable they Care Act. So, yeah. Well, but, but the change is there. I mean, millions of people are getting insurance, Gary, that ordinarily couldn't. So I think yeah, that, that, that <laughs> for the Democrats, uh, you know, Sanders is talking a lot about you know, the economic disparity that you're talking about. And but so frankly, but fr frankly, we've all always talked about that. This is not the first time the haves and the have nots. But he, we've, but we've heard we've heard that before. But how can you run against that? But, but, but I think I think it's interesting Obama. to me though that 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 Trump talks about it when he's one of them. He's one of the rich guys. Yeah, but that's how he can <laughs> you know, do it. Well, he is one of the rich but, guys. But it is true, Sylvia, that uh, President Obama's uh, approval, disapproval, it's, you know, close to with the margin of error, half and half. Half the country is not happy but with Obama. But that's no different half than George W. Happy. and other presidents. Well, I understand, but George know, W. was at, also at, at their not last, popular their in the their last end. year, but, in their last term, the that happens with presidents. I think the public's People having, are always ready for a change after eight I years. I think they have to make a decision, a Democrat primary, between an authentic socialist or or an untrustworthy progressive. I think that's what's happening in the Democratic Party. I'll take now, the latter. Yeah, that's what I figure. Well, because, in your okay. party, it's one calling a liar, the other one calling a liar, so it's, it's the between greatest, two liars. And by the way, it's the I most mean, contentious. I mean, is that any better? Well, it's the most contentious political environment since 1968. There's just no question of it. It's an historic year. Everybody says each year matters. This year, actually, it's it's about a once in a 50 year life, you know, experience. How do you how do you write a platform when you have Trump as a nominee who says that you know the mandate is okay with him? Planned Parenthood does wonderful things. He's against security interest uh, exception. Uh, he is uh, pro-choice in the past. He's given well, tons of life. No, he's life. given tons of money to Democrats. He's opposing and free. Republicans he, gave opposes money. Free, he opposes he free. He opposes free. He did. He opposes free. He opposes free trade. How? Do you let him write a platform like that if that's what he wants to do? Donald doesn't have to write a, pro, a platform. He's he'll just retweet. Okay, that's the truth. So because the Republican Party will vanish as we know it. No, it just it, it, you don't you have to understand in a situation like this where you have such a strong personality involved, the the personality will dictate what the public policy is. Now, I, I'm not saying that there won't be a big fight at the convention, and the conservatives will try to do everything they can to hold on to their conservative planks, but. Quite frankly, what Trump has done is completely thrown out the rule book, completely changed politics in the 21st century, because the news cycle used to be a week, or then it was a day, and then it was a few minutes. Well, it's not even 24 seconds now with Donald, because he could hit that retweet button and hit 14 million people like that. How is it that a clown is about to be nominated as president well, of the United well, States? I, you know, I think the retweeting may work in primaries because it's a smaller number of people. I mean, let's face it, not everybody participates in a primary. Uh, but when you hit to the general, people are going to want specifics. People are going to really know how you're going to get it done. People are going to know how you pay for things. You don't things. think, trust me, get you, gets, gets it there, so yeah. I, I know best. I, I I'm don't, rich. I, don't think so. <laughs> I know how to do I, I things. Well, so. right. Smartest well, people and, in the world. Know, but, but, but that's really gotten them agree, a long way. I right. really agree with, mm -hmm. with Governor Romney, but, but I think it's time for, for him to stop talking about Hillary's this and that. And, do it himself. He needs to show us his income tax returns. Well, he, does. Uh, he, he just keep, keeps saying, "Well, no, I'll, I'll it'll, you know, we're looking at it. It's complicated. It says, you know, that doesn't work." And I think as we get closer to November, the, the, the that question. the press is going to hold him more accountable. I think you're right. They're giving him a buy now. Yeah, because they want to, because they want to beat the Republicans. Well, they, they like the retweets. Hillary. They like the retweets. So, sure, they do. Who it's easier. Two it's questions. easier <laughs> for them. It's but, easier for them. They don't have to be investigative reports. They don't have to go in there well, and dig. They're lazy. They just kind of look at the retweets. What would? Who would you rather? Two questions. As a Democrat, who would you rather run against? I am a Democrat. I understand. <laughs> and who would you rather run against? Is for president. Uh, for president president who do you think be easiest to beat oh I think Trump I mean I okay. think I saw a poll I think sometime today even in, among Hispanics I mean Hillary would carry 70 percent and Trump would carry like 50 uh, 13 or 17 okay as an American 
Mm -hmm. Who would you like to see the Republicans nominate? Not party, but just, you know, this, two people are going to have a shot at being president, maybe three. So who do you think? I, I really didn't have a choice. I mean, I really... The, the, oh, come on. You the, know Dr. Carson would be your preference. <laughs> no. The only By the way, he had a great speech last night at the Harris County Republican Party. Okay, But he has no chance. Well, you know, the, uh, there, was, there was one of those governors, I can't remember his name early on, that, that, that was more sensible, but I just can't even remember his okay. name. <laughs> you know, I just can't even remember well, his name. Well, there were 17 you, you of them. Of and that's there true. were 17 yeah, of them, so that's was, understandable. All right, Paul, I okay. I mean, he, he, he said right. some common sense things about uh, uh, immigration reform. He said some common sense Kasich? things. It was Kasich. Okay. Right. Paul, same question. Who do you, would you like to run against for the, for the Democratic side because you think you can beat them? And then who, as an American, who would you like to see the Democrats well, nominate so we end up with a good president? I mean, if you wanted to look at Thrill in Manila 4, 5, and 6, you'd have Donald Trump run against Bernie Sanders, okay? Because that would be a fascinating political environment. Now, I think we're going to end up with, uh, obviously, Hillary Clinton on the on the Democratic side. That seems to be where the votes are. Only because the superdelegate vote stacks the field. You can't get a grassroots you know, movement in the Democratic Party anymore like you're seeing in the Republican because there are superdelegates like Senator Garcia that get to make those choices well in advance. Now, on the Republican side, I'm a Cruz guy because I think we need a constitutional conservative right now. And if I look at Supreme Court appointments, that's what um, I, I think we need. However, the Democrats have already signaled that they really are, are, are afraid of Marco Rubio. Uh, now, I, I'll, I'll put this in that no one knows how Donald Trump would be in a general election yet because everybody's underestimated him in the entire primary season, and there's been a wreckage of, of almost 12 candidates now that have tried to take him on, and they've lost. So this is a, a great groundswell of different people coming into the election. There will be a so different the American group. American is which candidate? Well, the American? Well, my American candidate is Senator Ted Cruz. Okay, so Paul, how do you how do you um, counter <laughs> counter the Democratic narrative, which is uh, that you're the party of no, no to holding a budget uh, a, a, a deal, a meeting, no to a Supreme Court nominee, no to two members of the Federal Reserve. Mr. Shelby has said I'm not interested. Okay. Uh, no What's to closing question? Guantanamo. <laughs> no to the Iran deal. What is uh, the party of no going to do, David? Nobody in the right mind would be for you the just Iran used deal. no again. Okay, I know I did. That's why I said that. <laughs> I, I, and that was my point. I was going to say, and nobody would be for that deal. Okay, now just because we're not in charge of the White House means that the Republicans have to be more of, uh, to block bad deals like the Iranian deal when it comes up. Uh, Which they close, couldn't, they couldn't do. Close Guantanamo, where do these people go? When you put them back into the field, they'll just cycle but, back in and, but, and, but and act remember, against the United even States. George W. is for closing Guantanamo too. I mean, this is not a partisan issue. No, and, and, and we have to have a trial phase because they've been, you know, at this point in time, well, you know. Nobody in, wants those people not in, in the Supermax US. in the right. United States. They need to and be the idea we're the saving money point. is just, just drivel. It's not going anywhere, Sylvia. Now, look. Guantanamo but, will stay. But, but David, No, but he's saying okay. that that is President Obama. And remember, I mean, he yes. wasn't. Okay. That, okay. He, Let me it go was to Harry not Reed a new idea. It was Harry not a new Reed idea. Harry and the, the Senate Democrats have wrecked the budget process. They stopped the budget from being passed for six to seven, nearly seven years. In, in, the, in the Texas Senate, we all have to work together. We can't even get out of there without a balanced budget. It doesn't exist in Washington, and no matter what happens, we know it bipartisanly, either for or against, Sylvia voted against the budget, I voted for it, we have to pass that budget. It doesn't exist in Washington right now. The big problem is the omnibus agreement mm. has been very unpopular with grassroots Republicans. And we've got Kevin Brady at risk, uh, who's the House Ways and Means Chairman, John Culberson, because they voted for that agreement. People are very tired of these giant blockbusting continuing resolution agreements. Well, also, they fund a lot of Obama's unpopular program. Right. Well, okay. and, so, and Paul, I think the real problem in Washington is frankly, both sides. It's time to sit down. It's it's like any business. You've got to give a little. The other side's got to give a little, and you try to meet halfway. That isn't happening, and, and, and I agree with, with, with David. I think, you know, uh, they went in just saying, we're going to just 
uh, not do anything President Obama and, wants, and they've been doing that since day one. Okay, let's say we I mean, agree, okay, on that. But to do that, you have to restart the budget. You have to get all dozen plus appropriations bills voted on and well, approved. Well, all they got to do is sit down and do it. Well, and I they mean, there's really I mean, nothing they, that's and they haven't done for eight years. But you take an attitude okay. of saying that the president should not meet his so responsibility send you two to Washington. and nominate someone for for, <laughs> yeah. for the Supreme Court. To me, is you know, close to treason. We haven't had a Supreme Court nominee yeah. in the Careful. last term for 80 treason. years, and, and you know, yeah. President Trump. Kennedy, 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 Kennedy was approved in 1988. Yeah, but it was an hour and a year But on the third try, it had already been going for a year. Here's an interesting question before we go off the Supreme Court. Do the Republicans take a risk in shooting down a moderate appointment by Obama and end up with a more liberal appointment by a President Clinton? If I think it's a strong possibility, especially since I'm convinced that Hillary Clinton is going to win Texas. She's going to win 10 of the 12 Super so Tuesday states. She's Paul. going to win all the delegates, and she'll be the next president Look, of the United States. So then if, somebody, if somebody gets nominated like an Orrin Hatch, that's a game changer. We'll see. How okay. about okay. Sandoval, the governor of Nevada? He, he took himself out. out. He said no. Okay. okay. They, they who's all, say, who's they the all gipper? say they're out until they get asked. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves Everybody loves everybody loves the Gipper, you know. Uh, especially Ted Cruz, he loves the Gipper. Uh, the Gipper uh, had an amnesty whenever he was president. The Gipper raised taxes 12 times. The Gipper, the Gipper was favoring gun control in California when he was a, uh, a governor. Uh, this uh, is in David's. World. I know. I realize this is who David's is, world, not the is, real world. Well, this is Ronald Reagan, and and uh, so he smiled, question? and he made deals. Where is the Gipper? Which where's is the, the where's question? the Gipper? Where's the Gipper candidate in this race? Rubio. Yeah, it's Rubio. If you want to look at it just from the standpoint of that uh, of that analysis, he's clearly, you know, already uh, kind of the consensus builder to the detriment in the Republican primary at this point. Now, but the strongest candidate in November, according to the polls. Right, it could be. But right now, I'll tell you that Cruz he's beats win state. Cruz beats Kim, and then right, this is a very important point. I'm, I'm tired of everybody talking about this. If Rubio can't win a state, he's not going to be the nominee. And that's the big fallacy with all this talk about Cruz falling out or not. The guy that you, you want to support has to win one. Now, speaking of winning one, you've got, uh, you know, only Trump versus Hillary is kind of in the margin right now. No, Cruz Hillary, beats Hillary. Hillary beats him. Hillary right, okay. beats Trump. But, but, but Cruz beats fact, Hillary. Hillary trumps him. Well, oh, I know. But 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 <laughs> Cruz trumps Hillary, and Rubio certainly trumps Hillary in every poll that I've more. seen. Well, well, okay. Local okay. race. Wait, no, 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 is no, is wait, Cruz going to win Texas? Yeah, well, it's getting, it's Texas. getting tighter. It is. It's I'll getting, predict we'll have about 90 out of the 155 delegates by the end of the night. Okay, but here's the question. But he win the popular vote? He will win. The popular but vote not a majority. By, by, no, not a majority, probably by, by 10 points or okay, more. Okay, but here's the question. Given the way this race is shaping up, it's a three person race at this point. It's, you know, it's, it's Cruz and Rubio and Trump. If Cruz and Rubio continue to go after each other and leave Trump alone, then uh, your take, Paul, what happens? If, if Cruz and Rubio continue to go after each other, and, and, and th uh, what that is is mutually assured destruction, okay. okay? They have to frame this as a public policy debate and start challenging those public policy issues. But they only got about two weeks to do it, because if well, no one wins- the debate? debate um, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm assuming they're going to do it in the debate, and if they don't, they haven't. It's, uh, it, it's March 1st is going to be a ringing, uh, you know, win for uh, Trump. for Trump. Okay. And they only have until March 15th to win a state. Otherwise, at that point in time, it's going to be over. You mentioned uh, Kevin Brady race. He's up in the Woodlands, and you mentioned that he has uh, Three some opponents. serious opponents. Three opponents. Uh, so let's let's talk about the other congressional race, which is hot here, and it's, it's in Sylvia's neighborhood. It's Gene Green versus well, more than one. Uh, well, because for Congress. John Culberson has some Yeah, John Culberson, also. we'll talk about right. that In race the primary. Next. All right, so you got Gene How Green. about Gene Green and Adrian Garcia? You've, I, you've mentioned I, there's I a think, lot of Hispanic candidates I for constable. I think Gene Green wins uh, just because he's always been very responsive to his constituents. Well, he's always been very responsive to his constituents. He's always been on the ground. I mean, Wouldn't you agree he's standing is, in the way of the Hispanic growth in voting? No, I think it just encourages it. And, and like I mentioned uh, <laughs> earlier, I, I think with so many other things on the ballot, we've got a lot of races going. I mean, I'm out there campaigning every every day, even though I don't have an opponent. We're all working on, on, on the numbers of the vote. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not looking for an opponent. So okay. I think I think okay. I think it'll come, but I think Gene Green will but win. But look at his TV ad. 
It's all about community service. He doesn't mention President Obama and doesn't talk about you know any other issues. He's talking about delivering services to real people in the district. And as usual, he's he's the toughest campaigner uh, probably in, in both parties. He's a very, very hardworking candidate. All right, so then you have Culberson versus Lloyd, and then there's a, a lady in the race too. What's her I mean, name? Marie Espinoza. Okay. Marie Espinoza. Uh, is, right. is Culberson headed to a runoff? He's uh, thought to be in some not. trouble. Okay, but. But but he is out working. I mean, I saw him walking blocks on Memorial Drive the so other day. So that shows he's worried. Right. And and but it's that type of year because you have to get out and if you have a vote like the omnibus vote, you need to be able to explain it. He's doing a pretty good job explaining it. Uh, when you look at what's happening in Montgomery County, there's a real uh, anger that comes out of Montgomery County in the in the Brady race right now. We all know that. Um, all, even though know that even though Kevin is the tonight, second most powerful tonight. man in the Congress because the mm -hmm. House Ways and Means Chairman is a very important position. Right. Other interesting races, uh, uh, you got a county attorney's race, uh, Republican primary. Uh, right Jim now, Leitner, I think Jim Leitner wins. Former I first assistant. I think we assistant. have one in our primary, which is um, the Overstreet. district attorney. Yeah. District attorney. Or district attorney. I'm getting a lot of mail from Morris Overstreet. And as we know, uh, Afri African American voters are probably 40, 50 percent of the very turnout. So does Overstreet and have a good so shot? Does he have a shot? Right now. Does he have a shot? I think, I think he does. I sure. think that's one to watch closely. And he's a former, I, I think court of a, former court of a criminal He's been on the judge. ballot. He's been, you know, he's been around Harris County a lot, and knows a lot of a lot of folks. I think it's one to watch closely. And then the other one, of course, is Brandon Dudley and uh, Ann Bennett for tax assessor. That's wow. that's one that that we're all looking at closely. I'm. For Brandon Dudley, I think he'll be some real breath of fresh air in, in the tax assessor's uh, we have office. Well, I actually like Mike Sullivan, but yes. he'll be there to face whoever well, the Democrats nominate. Well, we'll face that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, That's another we'll, show. We'll, we'll another debate show. that with uh, the right. uh, Railroad Commission. We have a big Republican race. we got, what, eight people running? I think Gary Gates is in the runoff for sure. With I somebody. think maybe Christian, one of the Christian the, is the candidates will be in there as well. Um, and w when we look at the Supreme Court races, those seem to be lining up. Uh, uh, with uh, Eva Guzman will lead the field on the highest vote total for anyone running for. We got two Greens running. Right. Cons probably. Social conservatives are supporting Rick, Rick Green. Probably Rick Green Economic wins. conservatives are supporting uh, Paul Green. Well, I think Rick was is uh, going to be the winner TMI, on that equation. TMI, TMI on, on people's races that we don't understand. Right. Uh, let me ask you a quick question. Well, have either of you been as surprised as I have been to see the passion that has come out of both Bernie and uh, Hillary Clinton on matters of racial justice. I mean, basically admitting institutional racism is holding African Americans back. It has been a dominant theme in the race. I have been shocked just, to hear. I'm not surprised. I've been shocked to hear the language. David, it's Impressed. going on. I mean, it, it, it's been Ferguson. It's been a number of other cities. I mean, it's 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 happened here in our own state. Yeah, Democratic mayors oppressing okay, people. I think it's important okay. that that, that we right. have the discussion and that we do what we can to to bridge uh, some of the divide that does exist, like it or not. David, if that uh, was especially that, when it comes to no. community and police. If that was driving turnout then the Democrat turnout would be close to what it was in 2008. It's not. Democrat turnout's not even two, one third of where it was the in 2008. Is lacking. Now, the Republicans will set a record. We'll have over a quarter million votes in Harris County, well eclipsing our past uh, past high water mark. What, and whenever, whenever turnout is high in New Hampshire and Iowa for Republicans, the Republican candidates for president have always won. The turnout and the passion is not because of issues like that in the Democrat Party. It's because there's issues in the Republican Party and the Republican Party thinks they're going to win. Well, regardless of what their candidate what, what, is. What you're conceding is the Republican Party could care less about racial injustice in the criminal justice <laughs> no, system. No, David, I'm just <laughs> saying Is that, that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that if your premise is correct, where is the big turnout in the Democratic Party? It's not there. You've got an authentic but socialist. I think it's driven more by, by a lot of people who really are working hard to make sure that Cruz can carry his own state. Well, but and, and Trump is really, really well, working we're hard to turnout. beat him. We're seeing record turnout in all the primary states. Yeah, but these are okay. also people voting that have, don't have a Republican primary voting history, Sylvia. So those are people that are getting attracted. This is kind of the angry voters. So you're seeing a lot of the voters that angry are voting voters. in your primary have not new voted. Right. They're new, okay, here, they're new primary voters? Right. About an eighth of them are new yeah, I haven't looked at any data about 5%, on our side. About one out of 20 are just have never voted before. And there's an interesting group of people, about 7%, that are people that have come back after over 10, 15 years of not voting in the primary. So, Senator, is it again. the angry white man who's voting for Donald Trump and they're coming to vote for the first time in, the de in the, your, your no, primary? No, you'll be happy to know that there's more women voting in the Republican <laughs> primary than men right now. So I'm, you, I, you, I don't see the gender gap, at least in the local primary. 
primary. Do you believe he? Do you believe he? Do you believe he's going to build the wall and make Mexico pay for it, Mr. Betancourt? You're the tax man. Mexico is not paying for it. <laughs> and, and by the uh, way, I, even if we build the wall, that you know, doesn't he, he control illegal to the immigration. Part. We need to focus on building bridges and not walls. Well, again, and we, you're a good Catholic. We need what do you, to have what do you make of the heart. Pope's condemnation of uh, of uh, Donald Trump but, as not it, a Christian? It was a setup question by a media. Gift. Once they <laughs> re-ran the question, uh, you know, I think neither the Pope nor the Donald wanted to be involved in the give or take they got into because the question was set up in the first place. But how it did you, change. Well, how do you know uh, it was set up? Because I, mean, I read the transcript. I mean, it's it out there. I read the transcript. It changed the narrative because right. right. Trump had become a 9 11 truther, and that went off. That was no longer a story, which is, by the way, incredible if you want to be a Republican nominee. So that, there <laughs> we have it. Time's up. As <laughs> always, greatest year since 1968. Heart. Greatest yeah. political Senator year since 1968. Thank you so much. We love having you. No one gets assassinated. What are you going to do? You said it, I did it. <laughs> Don't forget, every week following Red, White, and Blue, you can continue the conversation online with Houston Public Media's digital series, Political Perspectives, featuring Jay Iyer and Brandon Roddinghouse. Starting at 8 p.m., log on to HoustonPublicMedia.org slash perspectives. And remember, you can catch Red, White, and Blue every Friday at 7.30 p.m. here on TV8 and again Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. We also invite you to visit us online and send us your comments. We want to hear what you have to say about the issues that affect Houston. You can submit your comments at HoustonPublicMedia.org or on Facebook. And don't forget to like us. Thanks so much for watching. Good night.